Let's step inside a laboratory and see what the MUTEC particle charge detector looks like and how it works. The MUTEC particle charge detector is made for measuring charge in aqueous solutions. First, it detects a streaming potential of the sample and then the sample is neutralized by titration. This is done with the aid of polyelectrolyte titrants of known concentration. The PCD consists of the following components. A base unit, the measuring cell, a display, and a titrator module. We're ready. Are you? Make sure that the titrator module is properly mounted to the holder on the left side wall of the instrument. Also, verify that the power cable is connected to the socket on the back of the switched off unit. Screw the titrant bottles into the openings at the bottom of the titrator module. Mind the module's labeling and place the anionic titrant underneath the minus symbol and the cationic titrant underneath the plus symbol. Push the feeding tubes through the membranes, which are labeled feed, and push further until the tube ends come up against the bottom of the bottle. Push the dosing tubes through the membranes, which are labeled rinse. Switch on the instrument. If you want to load stored data into the display, you can do it now. In this case, press yes. Otherwise, press no. Then, press the menu button and go to the test menu for rinsing the tubes. Adjust the rinsing volume as needed. If the tubes are totally empty, or if you like to exchange the titrant currently in use for a different one, Perform at least two rinsing cycles with a volume of 10 milliliters each. Press the start button and the selected tube will be rinsed accordingly. Snap your fingers against the tubes to remove any air bubbles. Once the tubes are rinsed, you can perform a standard titration which is a titration of 10 milliliters anionic polyelectrolyte titrant against the cationic titrant. Always perform a standard titration if you have exchanged titrants or before starting an important measuring series. Finally, make sure that the stored titrant parameters are matching. Check and, if necessary, change them in the titrant menu. Now, and fill the measuring cell with sample material. If your sample contains bigger particles, such as fibers, filter it by pressing the supplied screen beaker into the suspension. The required sample volume per measurement is exactly 10 milliliters, and each sample should be measured twice. Use a pipette or syringe to take the sample material and transfer the sample into the measuring cell. Move the measuring cell along the guide until it clicks into position. Make sure the marked piston position is facing front. Lift the piston upwards and turn it counterclockwise to lock it in the bayonet catch. Start measurement, press on, and wait until the streaming potential signal is stable. If you prefer, you can also define a fixed waiting or settling time in the parameter menu. The polarity of the signal will show you which titrant is needed for the titration. If the sample is negatively charged, meaning it is an anionic sample, use the cationic titrant, and vice versa. Place the dosing tube in the tube holder and make sure that the tube end is immersed in the sample and in front of the piston. Then start the titration. The selected titrant will be added automatically 
until zero millivolt is reached. Switch to the diagram view to have a look at the ongoing titration. Once the sample is neutralized, titration stops and the results are displayed. The end criterion is charge neutralization. Switch off the potential measurement. The performed titration is now also displayed in the results screen. Remove the dosing tube and put it back into the titrator module. To remove the measuring cell, lift the piston slightly and turn clockwise to release it from the bayonet catch. Then pull out the measuring cell. Pour away the titrated sample and extensively flush the cell under tap water while moving the piston up and down. Fill in some acetone cleaning solution and brush the inside of the measuring cell as well as the piston. Pour away the cleaning solution and flush the measuring cell once more under tap water. To remove residual tap water, finally rinse the cell with deionized or distilled water and pour it away. Use a paper towel to clean the outside of the measuring cell. Don't dry the inside of the cell and the piston to avoid contamination. Now the PCD is ready for a new sample.